What the market reaction to the G20 news taught us about expectations for 2019. The recent G20 meeting was full of interesting developments and the market reactions were equally fascinating. First, the U.S.-China trade war ceasefire ignited a relief rally in equities that lasted all of one day. And then volatility returned with a vengeance the next day. The problem preventing the follow through in the equity rally was that the U.S. and China have different stories on what deal was actually cut. The U.S. PR machine emphasized the 90-day time limit on the ceasefire and China's concessions to buy more goods, especially automobiles, right away. China's PR machine focused only on the ceasefire as a positive concession from the United States to give peace negotiations a chance. And notably, China did not even mention the time limit or anything about buying more U.S. goods. Needless to say, markets were confused. Our take is that both sides felt a need to buy time, as China and the U.S. are now seeing some deceleration in their respective economies going into 2019. And the odds on a comp comprehensive deal in Q1 2019, they remain very low. Both countries are far apart on agreeing to anything in writing. Second, the other key event at the G20 meeting was the deal between Russia and Saudi Arabia to coordinate their management of oil production. The obvious rapport between Russia's President Putin and Saudi Arabia's Prince MBS gave market participants a very strong sense that Russia and Saudi Arabia would curtail production in 2019. The oil market immediately posted a strong rally. Of course, the oil market had suffered a $20 a barrel decline in October and November, so the expectations of some production cuts for 2019, it was a welcome relief to producers. We do caution, however, that the third major oil producer, the U.S., will see expanded output in the coming year, making it likely that the U.S. will be the largest oil producer in the world for 2019. And the Russia-Saudi deal makes OPEC somewhat redundant, as the global oil picture is now dominated just by the big three producing countries, U.S., Russia, and Saudi Arabia. Finally, we note that the G20 meeting did not happen in a vacuum. The Fed is still on track to raise rates at its December FOMC meeting, but the Fed has dialed back considerably its guidance on future rate hikes. It's made it clear that if the U.S. economy decelerates, the Fed will halt the rate hike sooner rather than later. That change in guidance has led to a weaker U.S. dollar versus other major currencies, a rally in Treasury prices, which has taken the 10-year yield back below 3%, and a widening of credit spreads between Treasuries and investment-grade corporate bonds. A flatter yield curve and wider credit spreads are not good signs for the U.S. economy in 2019-2020. We are already seeing fears of sharply slowing growth in corporate earnings. The corporate tax cut effect is now history, and the reality of the lagged impacts from the trade war and rate hikes of 2018, they're dampening enthusiasm for equities as we go into 2019. Bottom line, more equity volatility without a clear price trend. Fixed income is signaling worries about 2019 economic growth, and the U.S. dollar is a little weaker as the Fed dials back on rate hike expectations, even though the December hike is still in happening. I'm Blue Putnam, Chief Economist, CME Group.